beings that were created are above and beyond anything I could ever imagine for anyone. But we do miss the, we do miss the little people running around. I miss the voices. Be the best of whatever you are. That was Osawa. started my Camp Osoa career um, as a camper in the 60s, and I'm still here. <laughs> um, actually came back on staff in 1971, so this is my 50th summer. So I um, started as a camper in 65, and I was a camper for four years. Robin and I returned for the um, in the same summer of '71 on the staff. My role, um, besides a head cabin counselor, turned into program director, and um, and I also taught water ballet, canoeing, swimming, needlepoint, and uh, we just really have always enjoyed our our work here. It's a lot of work, but it's always been very very happy. So I'm Becky. And uh, my first summer was in 1973. I slept right there. I was here on the porch with Lucas. And Robin was in the front room, the head cabin counselor room. She was the head cabin counselor. Um, so I was a camper for six years from 73 to 78. And then the first opportunity for me to come back as a counselor was 82, because I had had a year of college. And so I came back in 82. That was my first summer. And I've been here minus one summer ever since. Well, camp officially began in 1921. The site was purchased and a road had to be built all the way in from the county road, which is about a mile and a half. And in those days, it took a while. And it was started by a husband and wife, Robert Snadden and his wife, Helen. They were known as Chief and Taito at camp. Chief named Camp Osoa uh, it's a it's a Chippewa word. Many of them are up around here, and it means roughly deep in the woods. And the other thing I think that was always interesting is that we became a girls' camp because Chief and Taita wanted this venture to be something that they could both be working at. And if it had been a boys' camp. Um, Taita would not have been accepted on the staff because she was a female. So I thought that was always interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the first couple of years, they just had a handful of campers. And then it, you know, caught on and they needed cabins built and uh, a dining room and so on. And then Linda um, was contacted by Chief's second wife, who took over when he passed away in 1952, and um, was asked if she were interested in running camp, buying camp, and um, they worked out something for her first year just so that she was sure that it was going to work out, and so she started her directorship in 75 and, and ran it for 35 years as director and owner. This place has been here for a hundred years. I mean, Highlands has been, you know, running for a long time, Manitwitch has. And, you know, camp changed with the times in the places where we sort of needed to do that. You know, we, we use computers to help with the program and things like that, but the, the heart of the program and the heart of the, the spirit of camp was always the same. Um, 
all the different water activities. So we had swimming, canoeing, diving, water ballet, windsurfing, sailing, skiing. Then we had land activities like badminton, tennis. We did have riding. Volleyball, archery, arts and crafts, uh, camp craft, which is the practice of learning how to, you know, survive in the wilderness. So building fires, identifying trees, things like that. We had <laughs> dance, we had uh, jump roping. A typical day at camp. So, Reveille at seven and inspection, cabin inspection at 7.40. So the kids had that time to get dressed, get the cabin cleaned up, you know, everything ready. Um, inspection, and then after inspection, we had breakfast. Breakfast was probably about 45 minutes, and then first classes started at nine. So we had two classes in the morning, and then um, rest hour. So in the morning rest hour, it was 45 minutes, and it was really just rest. They couldn't read, they couldn't write letters or anything like that. There was always a little hanky-panky sometimes, but not really with the little ones. They were like, out. Um, and then after rest hour, it was get ready, get the cabin clean before lunch, because right after lunch, we had afternoon inspection. And then we had two classes in the afternoon. And there were the general swim in the morning and afternoon, and then um, rest hour before dinner, which was shorter, and we could write letters and read. Um, we just had to kind of chill. And then after dinner, depending on the night, it was either Monday council fire, Tuesday were cookouts, Wednesday they had activities, Thursday we had activities, at night where kids could go to any activity that was open and work on honor skills. Our trips weren't real long, three to four days away from camp on purpose because um, it was always Osawa's philosophy that um, we, we liked having a strong in-camp program. Every trip has memories and what what's one really neat thing is that we most trips came back, especially the overnight trips, came back with a song. And it became a new song in the dining room, and some of those have been become our favorites yes. um, over the years. Yep. So, Kids learn so many skills about, you know, just pulling together and kind of working through adversity. And, you know, hardships are really just things that you just have to, you know, work around. And it's easier with teamwork then it's having to deal with something by yourself so those are the kind of things that are just you know it's not a programmed thing but it just happens in that experience which is just amazing you know your lifelong values like yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely yeah probably the most fun place to be was in the dining room because we sang and sang and sang and sang but I will tell the, the lasagna story because it's one of my favorite. Although maybe Robin should tell the lasagna story. Well, I was uh, initiated into being kind of the kitchen manager. I had no idea what I was in for. I said on lasagna night, um, make everything and let me know when you're pulling it out. Because lasagna should really sit for you know, about 10 or 15 minutes before you cut it. And I'll come over, give me a call at my desk or wherever I happen to be right then, and I'll come over and help with that. So they, somebody sent for me, and I, maybe I went over it for soupy or something, and I there was a pan of lasagna, and I said, okay, and I cut it, and I said, okay, get the others out. And one of the cookies said, um, that's all. Faye made. <laughs> and I said, one pan of okay. for 110 people. Um, I'll be right back. <laughs> so I ran over to Foothill, which is our office next door, and I knew Ruth was getting ready to come over for supper, and I said, Ruth, could I see you a second? <laughs> I said, 
there's only one pane of lasagna. And she said, do you have more? And I said, well, yeah. And she said, are the ovens still hot? And I said, mm, yes. She said, okay. Go over and have them, put everything in, and we will switch and have the evening activities first, and then we'll eat. Which, you know, we never would have done, but and nobody had any idea. So everybody was gathering in front of the lodge. We usually did right before the second bugle. And Ruth said, okay, tonight we're going to have activities. Now, and then we will have supper. And nobody said anything. Nope, I don't remember any griping or what happened or anything because they knew we were taking care of it, but something wasn't right. And so we had our activity hour and then the lasagnas were ready and we said, let's make it really a surprise. So you had the idea to have some music going and candles lit and kind of had an Italian yeah, night. We had it. <laughs> um, yeah. And that was that was really kind of a big thing because I was sweating. I thought, well, there's no there's not even enough for firsts for the whole dining room. And usually we had enough for seconds and I don't know, we made it. But it, I, I think it was a little later too. Oh <laughs> start to get dark. It was the summer of oh, 82, 83. It was a very, very hot summer. So I was in Clan as a counselor. I feel like it was my first summer. Oh. Um, anyway, and um, you know we have bugles to kind of you know signify when different you know parts of the day are happening. And so it's midnight, and and most of the kids were not even under their covers because it was that hot. I mean it was 75 in the middle of the night. And I don't know what was midnight or something like that. And all of a sudden, the General Swim Bugle started to play. And throughout the history, sometimes people have, counselors have played around and played a bugle in the middle of the night just for laughs. Frank. And yes, which usually did not go over as well as they thought it would. So that was always. But so the bugle blows. And they. And then we had sense, kazoos too. And kazoos. We went through the yeah, to, to say let's go have a swim in the middle of the night. So they had we set woke up, everybody up everybody up and all the kids came down and there were lights that were set up on the pier. You know, so I mean, it was it was a perfect night I and mean, it was unbelievably hot and humid and the kids all got to go swimming. And then I think we had the kids get out and sit on the pier and then the staff got to jump in. It was a memory maker, that's oh, for sure. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. But Some kids were screaming, like, what is going on? Because they were in the middle of a dream or something. I mean, they're like, I was, I just fell asleep. It was a little traumatic <laughs> in, in a couple of ways, but it was a big memory. few years if you could get a staff member to come back two years it was a miracle because there were internships that people had to do I mean we understood 
it's, it's just there was a change in the way life was. To be able to say we're gonna end on a really good note was the right thing to do. And it was it was hard. <laughs> and we felt part of it we owed it to the camp. Just the we owed it to the founding philosophy and the program and everything to keep it the way it had always been because that's what we loved and that's why we returned and to struggle or limp along or make so many changes that we felt were going to just happen. And that was actually in February of 2010. So we were, we were just going to be starting our, our uh, search for staff and our, get our camp enrollment. We were dragging our feet and we had to get that going and Linda said, I don't, I don't think we can. I think we'll just say we're stopping. It was really, really hard. Everybody wishes that it could continue, including us. But it just couldn't, and uh, it was a it was a tough goodbye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we do miss the we do miss the little people running around. I miss yeah. the voices and yeah. So when there the are challenges and when there I miss that teaching yeah. and the singing and yeah. all of it, and then knowing that, gosh, I mean, you know, what is forming, you know, in young lives is yeah. cool. This place, we, we use the word magical a lot. This is a magical spot, and I think anyone who went here would agree with would agree with us with that word. Um, what we love is that the friendships and the memories that were created are above and beyond anything I could ever imagine for anyone. So it's just been magical. Really, if we close our eyes and think back on all those years, it yeah. was basically darn good. Darn good. <laughs>